PTC Creo Parametric 3.0, Lesson 17. In this lesson, we're going to look at a couple of the shell reorder and insert capabilities of the system. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to roll back the model using the model tree and go over each one of the features, most of which are fairly simple. Our first feature is going to be a simple plate half an inch thick, 12 by 18. And again, when you do this, make sure you do exactly what the book says so that the illustrations follow along. In this case here, again, you have a symmetric part with 18 inches and 12 inches. So it's very easy first feature and extrude. Second feature is going to be basically the same thing but thicker. And if we double click on this, we will see that there's only two dimensions. One of the dimensions is the offset from the edge. So if we go into the section itself, we'll see that nothing was created except for one offset. So we use the project command, I'm sorry, the offset command, and we used a loop as the selection and picked on the face here and offset it by negative three inches all the way around. So it's the only defining dimension here. So follow the, the uh, instructions, get that, and make sure you use negative three. Though it's made of quite a few separate uh, simple extrusions basically this um, model. Next one is an extruded cut and the only thing you need to be concerned with here is paying attention to a dimensioning scheme because when you go to the uh, sketch itself you'll see that it is uh, not on the center. It's a common mistake when people do it thinking that it is aligned here and it is not. So if we go in here you will see that it is 75.75 from the datum plane. And this dimension here goes all the way to the bottom, not to the top. Another common mistake when doing it. All right, now, next we have a round. And a draft. Now the draft open the model and the draft. And the references here is to select the draft surfaces. So you're going to draft all the way around. It, we're going to try something here. We're only going to pick these three and then see what happens. So the draft hinges, I think the way it is the top, I should check with that. This is another mistake people make is where the hinge is going to be in this. It's going to be 10 degrees. And the top, like I said, is going to be the hinge. I'm going to make sure I'm saying it right, doing it right. And 10 degrees here. And you want to, let's see, flip those like so. And you'll see that I really only had to select three items because everything else is taken care of because of tangency. If you don't do this correctly, by the way, you'll have a hard time getting the distance here to be correct when you're finishing up the portion on the flange portion here. Just redo that. Now, because this is a completed project here, the some of these next items, which is the rounds, are actually put in at a different time. And we can take a look at this and go back down to the shell. And we'll see that because we shelled it after those rounds, we're going to propagate the round on the inside, minus the either 
adding to the thickness of the, ra the radius thickness and the thickness of the material for the shell or subtracting from. So basically you're getting propagation of the rounds all the way through. If on the other hand, if you do it, you'll see as you do it, you're gonna go through and you're gonna put the shell at a different position. And because of that, the rounds aren't gonna be propagated on the inside. So that's one of the things we're using here is the insert mode. Next we have a extrude. And let's edit the definition of that. This is another one that kind of throws people. This is basically nothing more than a loop. And you're offsetting. You're using the edge, so you've got to project and then offset. And it's negative 0.3125. So it's a double loop. And when you hit your middle mouse button after sketching, you will get a shaded section, loop section if you've done it correctly. Like so. And we'll finish that one out. Go to the next one is a round. And this round has multiple sets to it. So we're going to go up in here and edit the definition, pick on sets, and you'll see that you have one set, two set, three sets. So we divided them up. A couple of them are the same size, but we separated them anyway because of design intent in case they need to be different. Now, when you look at the drawing of this, one of the things, again, that kind of throws people. Oh, this is kind of interesting. I didn't even hope it would do this, but obviously it will. I have the drawing here, but none of the holes are showing because when I was working over here, I had rolled back the model. So let's finish this up. And go back. So another thing that throws people when they see this section here and they see the, the dimensions is that they think that that is all part of one section. But if you cut a cross section through here, you'll see up here in the on the PDF, this is formed by the hole, but all the rest of the geometry here, this is the hole here, this portion. Everything else is formed by the indention in the back the shell or the loop in the front here's our little round with our little lip that we created with an extrusion a loop extrusion so when they look at this they think this is some piece of geometry that they have to create really it's just a hole and once it's placed in there all the rest of the geometry shows up like this and you can see in the front it's just counterboard countersunk hole So let's take a look at that. One of the things is when you're placing the hole here, we're selecting this top little face here around the flange. And our placement dimensions are offset from the datum planes. This datum plane and this datum plane, the one that goes down the center of the part in both directions, four and five. This is an important placement. It's because it's going to determine what we do on our table. So, for instance, roll that back, click on hole. So I'm going to place it first, and then my location is going to be, placement is going to be from the planes, like so. And of course, it's going to be smaller. And 
and we did use a standard hole for this three quarters but no threads and through all and also using the counter bore but the counter bore is much smaller than this can't remember what it was but I'll make it smaller and it's going to be a through all hole which gives us the opportunity to do an exit counter ball so, I mean counter sink so we've got uh, 0.85 again I'm just using general dimensions so that we can have it here like so now when we're patterning this we're going to use dimensional pattern And then we're going to come up here and turn it into a table. So click on table. And we're going to edit the table, select an item. So this is what we want to put this dimension on the table and this dimension on the table. And then edit. And you'll see it put them in there like that. Now, one of the things to be aware of, you're basically, oh, it's not responding for some reason. And so I, I'm going to go back over to where the table is here. And it came back from the, well, looks like it's going to go back into the wrong one again. So uh, I'm unfortunately running another process behind here because I'm uploading the lectures and that to the website. And I probably shouldn't be doing more than one thing at a time. So that's one of the reasons why I'm running into problems. So what we're going to do is, We'll go back and we'll just bring up the original. And I want you to take a look at the table itself. So once we're into edit, you'll see that the here's the columns, four inches and five inches. And then we added instances one through seven. Again, you can add as many as you want. And then you click on the second field. This is very cumbersome table table. And then what you do is you put in whatever distance you want it to be in that direction. Now, one of the things I always suggest to people when you're doing this, since it looks so odd, the asterisk, by the way, just means that it's going to follow the same size. So it's still going to be four inches for here. And this one is still going to be, this one is still going to be five inches. And you can see these are negatives. So you're going to fill this in. But what I suggest, if you have a little bit of a problem, is don't do anything more than just the first one or two and then file exit and you'll see it propagate on the screen okay that's one way to, to get around uh, doing it all and then wondering what's going on if you do a few at a time then uh, it makes it a little bit easier I don't know if I can get rid of all of these at the same time or not no I can't So file, exit, and now I'll only have one. You'll see it propagated over here on the other side. So the pattern can be controlled with a table, but if you want to do just one at a time, and then what you do is you just go in and you go and edit, and then you add the next one. In there. So it's, it's not that difficult because you're only working with one thing at a time rather than the whole table. table again and again you can see you can add the second line and then see what it looks like you can add the third one make sure you're going in the right direction it's the one that you want it's fairly simple it's just the table is very cumbersome and I'm not quite sure why this hasn't been updated almost every other aspect of the old pro engineer pro engineer wildfire and now Creo Creo 2 3 they've they've updated most of everything but you will see the menu manager pop up and you also will see this old pro table drop pop up for you to work on. Standard orientation. Okay. Now basically on the in the chapter in the lesson, we have you do all this, the table, etc. And then you're going to move around some of the rounds. So we've already covered that. 
um, the last thing in here is you're going to be doing some of the um, uh, rendering again. And again, you can fool around with that. We covered it in the last lesson. And one thing you might try, and I'm not sure if you have the capability with your PDF, with your um, with your Adobe, but you're going to be actually asked to uh, file this as an uh, Adobe model. So file, save it as, uh, save a copy, and we're going to go down to U3D. So we want to make sure you click the right option here for the type. And OK. And it'll create a PDF. I do have Adobe uh, Extended Pro on here. So it's a little bit different than what you'll see on yours, depending on the capability of your system, of course. It takes a little while to create it. And let's go in. to my working directory. See if it did create it for me or if it put it here it is. Oil sync PDF. I'll double click on that. Actually this is I think the one that we did before. Not this one. So I should have been a little bit more uh, careful which one I selected from my list but regardless this is the one we created from the model originally and if you have a good PDF reader on here on your system or if you have the um, you can actually rotate the model right on the PDF, which makes it kind of unique. You can also take a look at the different options that are available for viewing it. And you can also show sections. A lot of options in here that you can do. around. The button, the, the three button mouse or five button mouse, whatever you have, I think I have a seven button mouse. Don't use them all, but in this one, the, the, the Adobe the PDF reader is going to require different manipulation than what you use for the Creo parametric. But it's, it's, I find this to be kind of amazing that we can do stuff like this uh, for just taking the 3D model and putting it into our system here. You can even uh, turn on the views here. It's sectioned, of course. Defaults. So you can play with that. Uh, you're going to save this and upload it for grading if you are taking a class. I don't want to save that. I'm not sure what happened to my other version. I think I was in a different, uh, I was in a different directory.
So it's kind of cool. A lot of options that you have with that. And it means that somebody viewing the model can do some investigation uh, right from a PDF. They don't have to have Pro Engineer, I'm sorry, the Creo. Um, there is a Creo Express Viewer that you can see things in also. So in both cases, you can manipulate the model and see things without being able to do uh, changes on the model. So it helps with sharing your uh, designs. This completes lesson 17.